Hello, and welcome to the People Purpose Podcast, a show that explores all the ins and outs of the challenges and opportunities HR, people managers, and all people face at work every day. My name is Julie Devlin, here with my much taller co host, <laughs> Chess Fields. <laughs> yes. That's good. Yeah. How are you, Chess? I, I'm so good, Jules. It's good to yeah. see you home, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I do a lot of traveling, but so do you. So do yeah. you. But hey, you, you just how, did a is it that, how is it that we generally. For those of you watching on on YouTube, Jazz and I wear the same shirt color a lot unintentionally. Mm, well, that's what you want them to think. No. <laughs> she texted no. me this morning. Hey, no, what color are you going lying. with? He's lying. He's lying. He's lying. No, no. It's no. funny. No, it's I funny. just feel like we're 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 just that in tune, Chaz. Yeah, you know, it's good to have workplace besties, right? I, um, yeah. or at least so I think, right? So, um, yeah, Jules, absolutely. Tell me, tell me something good. <laughs> something good all right so i had a pretty cool a couple of cool experiences um this past week i actually okay. got to see um at i, I was in atlanta uh -huh. um and i got to go to the georgia aquarium which was really cool nice yeah um <laughs> there are a lot of species of jellyfish <laughs> But let me tell that you. That is not something. our business stat of the day, by the way. No. Uh, oh, 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 we didn't. I didn't tell you that we're talking about jellyfish oh, this whole man. episode. That's awesome. No, but here's the thing about jellyfish. They are so. <laughs> why am I talking about this? <laughs> they, they are so disruptive, like when you're in the ocean. But when you see them in, oh, like, yeah. in a controlled setting, they're the most beautiful creatures, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, ever. And I saw so many different varieties and colors. Yeah. And, and it's always in, like, a dark section of the aquarium with, like, black lights. So they, oh, yeah, like, yeah. It's like it lights them up more, right? Yeah. 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 Cool. yeah. And, yeah. and the other part of, of the aquarium that I absolutely loved was the sea lion show. And yeah, oh. I know, I know I'm like a child. So okay. here, no, I know here's the thing. They rescued these sea lions. They That's rescued cool. them like from abuse and like, you know, people yeah. who were just treating them poorly and whatnot. Wow. So anyway, that's my something good. Um, awesome. I can talk about my experience uh, <laughs> for a while, but I, I won't. I How about it. you? How about you? It. Uh, you know, I, I've had a little hiatus from traveling, which has been good. I'm starting to get antsy to to get back on the road. But uh, next week we get to go, or at least I get to go back to uh, one of my favorite cities, Las Vegas. So oh, we'll get to that's, see. No, that's my favorite city. Uh, I know. Go get, go get to see uh, some of our customers out there and spend some time with them, which will be really good. It's actually, I don't even think I'm in Vegas for longer than 20 hours. Oh, wow. Like I, I, yeah, mid-morning flight, and then I leave early the next morning. But uh, I'm going to make the best of it. So I'm really excited. So awesome, awesome. Um, with that, so Julie, here's what's really cool today. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different than we haven't done in the past. This is going to be a two part episode. And what was so funny is yesterday, uh, we started to talk about this episode that we're going to talk about today mm -hmm. and, and the topic. And I was like, man, we can surely we can get this in in, in you know 20 minutes or so. And you just looked at me and said, Chaz, just stop. I know. I did. <laughs> we gotta do two episodes. Look, uh, just for, for our for our faithful listeners, I often say that to him, by the yeah, way. Yeah, that's I mean, yeah. Uh, no, no matter what the topic is. Chaz, just just that's stop. right. That's right. So uh that's right. So we're going to uh talk about training, but before we do that, huge shout out. Always going to start the episodes like we always do with the business side of the day. Huge shout out to one of our interns, Molly, who went out and found uh, some stats for us to use. Yep. She's actually been really, really helpful uh, as, as we've done this podcast and, and doing some stuff for us. So huge shout out to her. Uh, so business stat of the day, uh, <laughs> only one out of every five people would recommend their organization's learning and development opportunities. What? First response. Only yeah. one out of five? Only one out of five would recommend their organization's learning and development opportunities. And that came from a Harvard Business Review study. Jules, first thoughts? Mm, um, okay. So that's not great. Um, I, I guess, I guess as we're going along here, yeah, uh, it, it's interesting to sort of think about your own learning and development throughout yeah. your, your own career, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I, would you recommend your organization's learning and development opportunities? And But here's the thing that I think is really interesting. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's interesting, but would companies even know that their employees say that? 
That's a good question, right? So you think about the source of the study. Did you just, you know, obviously did you just reach out to people and say, how do you feel about our, you know, our training and development or learning and develop? programs or you know whatever it is very consultative of you by the way to to flip the question on its head i love that no 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 uh, no, no I it's think, true no, I, think, I don't think i know i think i know i what i'm saying is do companies know that that's how the employees feel not oh, that they, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 not that they um, responded to the survey that way that, that's a good question it, it, it another good it. question so that's yeah. two for me yeah, that's good. Okay. It be- well, it begs it begs us to think about how much did you learn. Good segue here, but how much did you learn with on the job training, or did you learn it from a third party source, or did you learn it elsewhere? I mean, there's a lot to to take in here, but this is why we're here today. Yeah. Is we're going to talk about the gap in learning and development or training and development. And here's the deer. Here's wow. I'm struggling today, Jules. You are. Here's the deal. Um, it's probably not in the training itself. Right. Uh, and, and the way that I'm saying this is that the training that's offered by companies, uh, I don't want to generalize, but it could be good or bad. Um, most of the time, I would say they, they, give you the information that you may or may that you may need but here's here's the kicker so many organizations often have just a one track in their training and development programs okay so this is when we were talking about this i i felt like you know there's kind of two camps they either throw you in and and you figure it out right mm-hmm. or you have learning modules where you sit down and you you know you click through a computer screen and you and you go through all of these different modules and then okay you're ready you know go do your job and some jobs may even just make you read manuals right yeah, i remember yeah. you shared a story on a previous yeah episode. that story yeah with yeah. the lady with the the big huge manual and they said this is your training yeah right? and, and and i i don't purport to say that that is what organizations today are doing i gosh i hope not but um the point is it's happened yeah and yeah go ahead Chad. so no so it's it's typically one track right like i i you know it's typically one track in my opinion at least the companies that i've worked with my question to you jules is if it is one track like how how does that make you feel for when you say to- but when you say one track do you mean um just one way of training or yes. one okay, okay. Yes, yes. So yeah. like so, some you know, some companies are very adamant about the computer modules and, and you you get online and you you do the computer modules and then it's like, okay, go do your job. Like that mm-hmm. to me is one track. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 Um, how does it make me feel? Well, first of all, it pigeonholes you as an That's employee. Right. It pigeonholes you into saying this is the way it's gonna be and you better understand it this way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what we need to do is we need to look at this, uh, this current generation of workers coming up and how mm-hmm. they've learned, you know, the question becomes, <laughs> you know, so many of us, you know, we l- all learned a certain way going through school. That's right. None of us really know how students today are learning. Mm-hmm. What are the way- and a lot of the, what they're doing today is obviously much more tech focused. Um, but it's also a lot more hands-on with, mm-hmm. with, a, with a lot of different things. And I say this only because uh, I have nieces and, and a nephew. And Chaz, I know you know you have a little one too. Um, and you probably see how he learns. You know the way he learns today is going to affect how he learns at work. That's right. Um, and but it's not only that; it's also uh, companies having to understand that things are changing. That's right. And things have changed and they're going to continue to evolve. So they, I, I would say, especially in smaller businesses, there it's likely there is no dedicated mm-hmm. training and development professional, somebody who's there creating curricula. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's not easy because mm-hmm. – who has time to put a training curriculum together? Yeah, it, it it varies by organization, typically by size, right? The larger organizations have those individuals that are in place, but for the vast majority of companies, it typically falls within the hands of HR working with operations or sometimes just HR or sometimes just operations, right? Mm-hmm. And and the big question is if it's not how you learn. Okay. If, if, if the way that you're currently doing it, if it's not how you learn going based off of the discussion that you, or, you know, the points that you just made, 
how many employees are you actually losing or how much money is it impacting the bottom line that your organization is losing? You know, Julie may be a really, really good employee and, you know, she has some of the skills, but when she transitioned, it's like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to teach her how to do this job. We don't want to lose Julie, but it's not the way that Julie learns. So right. then you get frustrated. Right. And then you go through this experience where it's like, hold, hold on. This is not what I signed up for. Yeah. Had we just approached your training and development a little bit differently, you you would probably would have stayed, right? Yeah. Well, I think a lot of organizations have these prepackaged yeah. um, ideas and prepackaged trainings. And mm -hmm. what you do for a lot of this is you check a box. And listen, I'm not saying that it's it's every training should be unique or anything like that. But what I am saying is that you know one of the gaps is that we don't take the time to step back and figure out how it is that our people learn. And when I say our people, I don't mean our employees as a collective. Right. I mean on an individual basis. Yeah. And this is what this is what, you know, Chaz and I um, we we talk about a lot, the employee experience and also how we have to treat each employee experience as a unique entity. Mm -hmm. Because it is. So yeah. How do you, if you if you're training employees, you know, the question is are you measuring that training? Um, are you are you asking them if, if this is this how you learn? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, there's so many different considerations that I think that we and in HR um, that we don't really think about because we just don't have time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. here's the thing: taking time now is going to save you a lot of stress, stress and pressure, and all of the above um, in the future. And it's also going to help to attract and retain. Yeah. I think for me, training and development is very, very personal. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe, maybe that's embedded or ingrained in my DNA or, or however I was raised, you know, you look back and, and a lot of it has to do with um, being an athlete. And I know you were an athlete too, Julie, where if we weren't, I talking, am an athlete. Jeff. Oh yes. We are athletes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever makes us sleep better at night, right? That that does. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, you know, so so I think I think about uh, the like the mechanics of a baseball swing. If somebody didn't break down each section of the baseball mm -hmm. swing, I probably wouldn't have been a, a decent hitter. You know what I right. mean? Or uh, I think I think about you as as a catcher, right? If people didn't teach you how to block a, a ball, you know, uh, more runs would have scored. So so I take that and I think, man, in organizations that. They're paying me to do a job and be something and, and to do something that's going to help the organization, but also help me be successful. Like that's personal to me. I remember, go ahead. I know. Sorry. You, you actually, no, you actually just hit on something that I think is, I'm going to say it, everybody. Brilliant. So, <laughs> so, Hold on. Can you say it one more time? No, <laughs> no, I can't. So, <laughs> so yes. Okay. We can think about workplace learning. Yeah. Athletes are, are workers. That's okay? right. Athletes mm -hmm. are continuously training to improve their craft. Mm -hmm. We can look at our workers that way too. Do we have avenues? Do we have venues or do we have uh, resources That's for right. our employees to continuous, continuously improve their craft. Mm -hmm. And if not, why not? I mean, think about, uh, think about a basketball player, right? If a basketball player didn't take shots, however often yeah. they take shots, you know, um, then likely they would sort of lose their touch. Yeah. Um, baseball players, you mentioned swinging a bat and breaking down the swing. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And golfers. I mean, oh, yeah. 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 If, if, <laughs> trust me, if, if I take a while <laughs> off without golfing, it's, well, it's never pretty when I golf, it's just, but still, just worse. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's just, worse. it's just worse. So, yeah. no, I think that's actually a really good segue. So, if you, or oh, segue, a, a good uh, example. Yeah. So, if, if you think of your employees almost as athletes. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, as they have to continue to uh, continuously improve in order to improve your bottom line. Yeah. I, I, so for me, I remember this specific story, and I'm not going to share the company, but I, I remember uh, for me personally, it was just a we're going to throw you in, you know, the deep end and hope that you swim kind of experience. Mm -hmm. And it, it's kind of that pivotal moment, right? It's really a pivotal moment, whether you want to learn or you don't. 
And I think especially with how people are learning today and how things are being taught, and then you add the COVID element, you know, even even Molly, you know, we're just gonna call her Molly the intern. She's amazing. She was Molly sharing the like Molly the intern. She was sharing with us yesterday how different it, the college experience was for her during COVID mm -hmm. versus, you know, for like you and I when we were in school, it was all face-to-face -face personal you know, virtual yes is convenient, but I'm, I'm, I'll be the first one to tell you, I despise virtual learning. Right? Yeah. It's, and, it's and yeah. Me. Yeah. And you know that I'm a, a college professor. Right. So, uh, the virtual thing, it's been extremely interesting mm -hmm. going from many years of teaching in person mm -hmm. to having to flip to mostly all virtual. Um, all of my students tell me that they prefer in person, sure. um, even though it, sometimes it's less convenient for them to physically get there. Um, but they still learn better that way. The age group that you teach, what's the age group there? Oh, it, it varies. It varies okay. from because it's graduate students. So it varies from students who just uh, graduate undergrad to, oh gosh, people very late in their careers, uh, people cool. in their sixties, seventies. Oh. I've, I've taught people in their seventies. Wow. It's good for them. Yeah. It's people it's trying awesome. to better themselves. But if you think about someone who's in their seventies yeah. versus someone who's in their twenties and the way and their learning styles and mm -hmm. what they've been used to yep. their entire lives, mm -hmm. you know, that is, that's a consideration, you know, for my classes, Chaz, what I do at the beginning of every class is I give a pre-class survey. And I ask, I ask my students, you know, uh, a number of questions. As sure. What do, you, what do you hope to get out of this course, et cetera? Right. But the one question that I'm really looking for, uh, looking for, is how do you learn? Mm -hmm. And you know, I'll get many different responses. Um, hands on, you know, au some are auditory. I don't know mm -hmm. how that is. I, I could never, um, you know. But uh, there's 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 a lot. But the thing is, with virtual, it all, oftentimes you're limited. Uh, yeah. in terms of how you can accommodate those learning styles. So that's where we need to get really creative, yeah. <laughs> if you will. Well, it'd, it'd be interesting, you know, if you continue down the path of teaching to start benchmarking that, you know, using something online to benchmark how those individuals learn. And then, you know, three years from now, we can compare that. I think the critical piece of all of this is, are we taking a step back and learning how our people learn? right? That's the gap. So you, you talk about, you know, the, the individualized approach, the personal approach, you mm -hmm. know, whatever it is, organizations could really figure out where employees may be struggling. And, and honestly, it, it may not be the employee's fault. It's like the example no. I gave earlier, it may not be the employee's fault or on the flip side, you know, we do, we do know there are people out there that apply for jobs that, that may lie on their resume, you know, and, and they get the job and then they say, well, that job's not for me. Right. However, if, if we flip that and we understand their learning style and present information, and I'm not saying you have to do it all the time, because I think we need to challenge ourselves within different learning styles. But if you can present most of the information mm -hmm. in the way that they learn, you know, there are great benefits. So Julie, did you know, well, let me go back. Typical learning styles, right? Let's yeah. talk about typical learning styles. So typical learning styles, visual and auditory. I'll, I'll talk about, you know, those are the two that we often see in education. And then there are others, Julie, you know, the other two, right? Yeah. Kinesthetic. And then, uh, you know, the, the reading and the writing folks as well. Kinesthetic meaning hands-on. Um, and I think that that's one that's oftentimes difficult to mm -hmm. accommodate in this environment, especially yeah. with, with COVID. Yeah. So I think about my learning style, it's visual auditory and discussion, right? You know, and of course, like hands-on, you know, for me, but, but when it comes to reading and trying to understand something, I have to, I have to hear it. I have to do it and then I have to process it. Right. Yeah. But the, the kicker to this is that there are over now education learning styles, over 170 charted learning styles. Yeah, that's crazy. But uh, I mean, it's, it makes sense uh, mm -hmm. because again, it just shows how individually unique all of us are. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, what I find is that oftentimes folks have a mixture of learning styles. Yeah. So it's like a hybrid sort of approach. Mm -hmm. And that's the approach that you have to take. So I think what we're what we're getting at here, um, by talking about learning styles, by talking about sort of, you know, how do people learn, what you and HR should be thinking about 
is are you making those accommodations mm -hmm. even in even with small steps mm -hmm. providing providing options for people yeah uh you know not everybody's going to thrive answering a, a, a virtual questionnaires yeah. you know, about trainings um mm -hmm. the other thing is are you testing your employees after these trainings because that causes a lot of anxiety for folks the concept of testing is becoming more antiquated as the years go on, at least in higher education, in my right. experience. Yeah. I, it, you had mentioned something accommodations. That's a, that's a, that's a word that triggered something in my mind. Let's, let's add into that too, for people that may or may not disclose a learning disability, mm -hmm. right? It, it, I know you worked for a, a nonprofit before Jules. Can you mm -hmm. share a little bit about that experience? Yeah, I, I, I would have some employees uh, who would maybe not quite understand a training. Um, yeah. I, Chaz, I had people that worked for me that had trouble reading. Yeah. Um, and that that's, you know, that's not something that we always consider mm -hmm. when we're hiring. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think that had I had to do it over, one of the questions that I would have asked, you know, um, most likely post hire is well, how do you learn best? Yeah. How can we train you? Uh, you know, how can we train you to do your job? Now, here's the other thing. We can't assume that we train someone and that they get it. That's right. Absolutely not. Um, I would have some managers who would come to me and be frustrated saying that this employee, well, I trained them how to do whatever task it is. With the and, one track, with the well, one track. Right, right. Yeah. Or, no, yep. or one time or yeah. in a setting, in a setting that was not conducive to training. Or distracting. Yeah. Or distracting or, or something complex. You know, mm -hmm. what we're not taking in, into consideration here is that, you know, they're, Again, learning needs to be a continuous process. Mm -hmm. It can't just be a one and done kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Sort of like employee engagement, mm -hmm. right? And it's and learning and development is absolutely a part of employee engagement. Right. Um, and we need to make sure that we are um, not just assuring engagement, but we're continuously improving engagement. And mm -hmm. that includes learning and development. Yeah. So it's funny that you mentioned that. I, I think the 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 key to what you just said is with that manager and that employee in that single track, one that would tell me that you're, should you be managing or should you be measuring training effectiveness or are you managing training effectiveness? Right. Because that one time and that one individual said, you know what, they're just not cut out for this job. And you're like, whoa, 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 hold on. We showed them once in a distracting environment that tells me that uh, training effectiveness was not there, or there could actually be an issue, right? The The point is we have to look back and we have to start measuring those, but it's a lot easier to measure something on success if we know how that individual learns to begin with. You right, see what I'm saying? Right. And, you know, think about how you can track that in your HR tech too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that it's important that we document those things, you know, mm -hmm. also when someone takes a training, you know, how, how are they doing in the training? Are they asking a lot of questions? Are they, are they, gosh, are they engaged in the training? Mm -hmm. Um, I, it's not easy today to capture uh, the attention of adult learners. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, I just think that there's a lot more considerations that we have to take into consideration mm -hmm. when it comes to how we're training and developing our employees, because really uh, that's the foundation for how they're going to perform moving forward. Yeah. Um, and when we, when we want to attract and we want to retain, um, you know, this is something that I think needs to be, needs to be top of mind. And yeah. oftentimes it probably isn't. And again, I don't, say this to blame HR professionals or any or man managers. I right. know how busy people are and short staff. Shame, shame, shame. No, no. <laughs> no, I know how busy people are right. and, and short staffed. Right. But again, it's about saving yourself stress in the future and also right. showing the employee you care. That's right. I think that's probably a good stopping point before we cut into the next episode because we're running short on time. Julie, what what are we I mean, what are we going to talk about in the next episode? 
Well, let me throw in a little teaser in the next for the next Ooh, episode first. Okay. Can I can I do that? Yeah, I think so. Okay. It's what, well, whatever we want to do. I don't All care. right. I know. It's our show, all right? No, 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 no. Over 55% of employees consider career growth and opportunity more important than salary, according to Forbes. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting, right? Yeah, it is. That is, yeah. I, th- I think the real question is how do we change or break through and simplify this, what we talked about today for our HR, our training and, and learning and development leaders. And that's where we're going to ask you to listen into the next episode. Um, however, Julie, before we close this out, mm-hmm. what did you find your purpose in today? Oh, besides hanging out with you, Chaz, oh, I, fa- <laughs> um, I found my purpose in, uh, realize we all need to realize that training is more than just what we think it is. And we're going to go and we're going to go into that more in the next episode. I think this was just sort of a setup for everybody. You know, there's, there's a lot more to it. Heck, we could probably do a whole series on this. Um, but, uh, I'll, I'll just I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, I th- I think it's the same thing, Julie. I think we've got to step out of the traditional way of work when it comes to uh, when it comes to training and development because mm-hmm. again, training and development is personal. Going back to your employee experience discussion, I think if we can personalize training and development, my goodness, watch our you know retention rates go up, you know attrition will go down, and there's a huge opportunity for us to really, really make an impact on that individual and ultimately for the business. So, a few reminders before we leave: don't forget to like and subscribe and use the hashtag People Purpose Pod on social media sites like Twitter and LinkedIn. Hey. Also, be sure to check out the latest blogs and research from the Workforce Institute at UKG by visiting workforceinstitute.org. That is episode one of this two-part series around training and development. We look forward to seeing y'all soon. See ya. Cheers. Bye.